you like DIYs, hauls, flips, and everything farmhouse, you are in the right place. Hi, this is the Rusted Willow, and my name is Tammy. Today, I am taking you guys outside to the garage, and we are going to be working on some power tools. I have my saw set up. I am just picking through my wood pile, trying to figure out how I want to make these. So I'm going to make some toolbox looking things, um, and I'm going to make a pumpkin out of some raw edge wood. The wood that looks like, I'll show you the background. See those tall planks right there? Yeah. So a while ago, if you guys follow me on Instagram, the closet crafter, AKA my husband, um, came out here and cut down a piece of our raw edge wood. It is cut down from an ash tree that he, um, took down in our backyard and we had a friend of a friend uh, do the planks for us. And so we have this raw edge wood and it is amazing. It is so beautiful. And he didn't even offer to make me a shelf. Anyway, that's another video. Um, so if you did not see the closet crafter crafting away at the kitchen table, making his shelf and I caught him, uh, anyway, um, that's what this is going to be. Some of this is going to be made out of and it's going to be beautiful. I just know it. I just, anyway, I have this vision in my head, so let's get to it. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so you just take your pencil and kind of shape it how you think you want it. Safety first. Oh, and this is a jigsaw. Just pull the trigger and you're good to go. I am right-handed, so I'm gonna turn this around. You don't know anything about ash it's a very very hard wood so you really got to use your upper body strength and just cut into it so i'm going to try to do this little last curve right here and then we'll take it to the sander oh and it's heavy And I could round this off at the bottom, but I want it to stand up. So I'm probably just going to take it to the saw and cut a straight line here. I just wanted the rounded edges on the side. So we got that done. The main thing is with the jigsaw, keep your saw level, put steady pressure on it and let the saw do the work. It's still hard. 
It's not the easiest thing to do. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's still hard. Okay, now we're gonna go to the other, we're gonna go to the other saw. Okay, so I just wanna barely take the edge. All right, I'm not sure what happened to my videos at this time, but um, they went from working to slow, slow motion to working, and I didn't even touch it. So I'm gonna try to figure out what I was saying in these videos. Right. But that's okay. We're going to make it work. So, yay, that's a win, yay. <laughs> On to the next project. So today is a collaboration um, with some very talented ladies. The host is Crafts Unleashed by Robin and the co-host is Zaina from OK At Home DIY. So make sure you go over and check out those ladies' channels. I can't wait to see what they made with their power tools. And um, everybody today is getting powerful with their power tools. I have not done a lot of videos showing power tools. I just go out and do it and cut it and, and make it. And um, so I'm glad that this time we get to show you and explain how to use the power tools. But don't be afraid of these power tools, ladies. Just remember, you're always in control. So you can either push that button or not push that button. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoy this playlist. Everything will be linked down below in my description box and enjoy. Okay, so never mind the mess behind me, but I am here trying to figure out which kind of wood to use. I am gonna use these architectural pieces here, and I have some spindles here, but I also have some other spindles, and I have this baseboard here. Look how wide this is, I mean, goodness sakes. And I have a feeling it might be too big, but we're gonna see how it's gonna to go together, and hopefully we'll figure it out. Okay, so I have two old baseboards. This one is nine and a quarter inches. Oh my gosh, it is so wide, literally. Awesome, awesome baseboard. You don't get this. Anyway, gorgeous, I love it. We're gonna use it. So, it's probably gonna be for me. Gosh, I have a hard time letting go of my stuff. Okay, let's get to it. I just wanted to add that some things you should always have on your miter saw table or by your saw table or whatever, a uh, tape measure, um, a pencil, which I keep in my hair when I'm working. <laughs> that way I can easily find it because if I lay it down somewhere, just like my cell phone, it's gonna be lost. I'll never find it again. 
I think here I was showing you my fur baby. He's laying out there watching me basking in the sun. <laughs> um, another thing you need by your saw table are your safety glasses. You should have multiple sets of these, uh, pairs of these, setting around your workshop at all times. So, And always wear your safety glasses when you are using a saw because you don't want sawdust in your eye. That's very painful and it can cut your cornea. So what I'm showing you here, I'm just lining up the blade. I'm not pushing any buttons or cutting it yet. I'm just lining up the blade to take off what I want to take off. There is a laser light that you can use um, and turn on. And this saw, you know, pulls forward and I push the buttons, pull the trigger and cut it. And it worked perfectly. Make sure those match up and they do good to go okay now I need to figure out which um, trim is gonna look best with these architectural pieces okay so here I am just showing you that I am using a pallet board for the bottom I am using a hammer which is not a power tool <laughs> um, to hammer out the nails and take the nails out of these pallet boards so I can cut it down and use it in my project. So now my dilemma is which spindle to use. I have this one, which is, I don't know, I got it at a Habitat Restore for $3. Um, it doesn't match on either end. I mean, I don't know what it was to probably stair risers or something. Um, and I also have this old chippy, you can see it's been painted a thousand times um, spindle here. And I don't know, I probably picked these up somewhere for a couple bucks. Um, but anyway, I think I'm gonna use the white one just because my baseboard is already white and my architectural pieces are painted white and I like the chippy look. And I think it's just gonna go better with the look I'm going for. So I think we're gonna use the white one. I'm just gonna measure to make sure that both ends match and actually they don't even have to match they're already cut pretty straight so we're just going to get our bottom piece which i already prepared this is a pallet board that's going to be the bottom to this box and i'm just going to measure off the spindle it's going to be the same size as the spindle so let's get that going dang it i forgot to hit record okay so i've already cut my bottom i prepared my pallet board, cut my bottom to the same size as my spindle. And you can see that it fits perfectly for the handle. Um, it's not gonna be very deep. So, I got spiders crawling all over me because of these boards are so old. Okay, these are done. Let's get some good edges on this. Knock, oh, ow, all the spiders off. Don't get splinters. This is our bottom board. These are our side boards. That's our mark. And this one's kind of chewed up, but that's okay. It's on the inside. It's not really gonna matter. I'm just gonna cut a straight edge so that we have a good, clean, straight edge. Board is a little different.
I think we're good. Let's go put this sucker together. I take my orbital sander and I sand the front, the back, the sides, and everything on all the wood pieces for this, um, gosh, I don't even know what you call it, flower box maybe? I use my Gorilla Wood Glue and I put it just on the pieces that I do not want to come apart. I am not using the Gorilla Wood Glue on my architectural pieces or the spindle because if I want to take this box apart, I can take the sides off and the handle and do something different with it. So here you see me, I am just, I have a piece of wood down, well I have the other side of the board down um, to protect the coffee bar that I haven't finished yet. <laughs> um, my house is just um, filled with projects that I need to get done. So the main thing on this nailer is keep your fingers out of the way. You don't want a brad nail to go through your fingers. Um, so always try to line it up. Just get one nail in. If you can get one or two nails in, then you're good to go. It'll hold it in place long enough for you to turn it, uh, maneuver it a little bit, and um, get it in a position where you can continue to nail it. So I just add more brad nails all across the bottom, and the first side is attached. This actually doesn't turn out exactly how I wanted it, but that's okay. We made, we made revisions and I think it turned out even better. So I put my wood glue on the wrong side. <laughs> so there I, you see me wiping it off. Um, so now I'm putting the wood glue on the right side. And I have to lay it down and figure out a position to add some brad nails in. And once I figured that out, we were good to go. I turned it over and continued to add the brad nails. Now on the architectural pieces, I'm only adding the brad nails to the bottom and to the spindle, the handle. And the white spindle ended up being too short because... I had to revise the box because I didn't make, it wasn't wide enough for how I wanted it to look. So if I would have put the boards on the outside, it would have been too wide for the architectural pieces and there was a huge gap and I didn't like the way that looked. So I put the boards on top of the bottom board, which made it too narrow for the architectural pieces to fit on the bottom board. And so therefore I had to nail it on the outside. I love this pumpkin. I did not seal it yet because I don't know how I'm going to use it. I could even cut a hole in the handle, but I haven't done that yet. I haven't decided whether I want to do that yet. Um, it could be used as a charcuterie board or just leaned up against the fireplace like that, like so. I love it. I love how it turned out. It is so gorgeous. The wood grain is amazing. And the back side is even better. Since it is for fall, you could leave this out. Clear up until Christmas. Mazakeen has to come and make an appearance. I love it. So here it is just by itself. This is the back side. This is the front side. gorgeous. I went ahead and um, gave it just one light coat of plaster all over and you can't even tell. It looks exactly the same. It looks like it's matched and been there the whole entire time. I absolutely love how this box turned out. I mean it is gorgeous. So I style it a few different ways to kind of show you 
what you can do with this. I was gonna add some Christmas floral, but I ran out of time because I had already styled it three different ways for fall. So we're still in the fall season and that's okay. I mean, it's not even Thanksgiving or it's not even Halloween yet. And um, you can style this box in a thousand different ways. So I just put different florals in there. I think it looks so high end. I love the pampas grass in there. I think that just brings it up another level um, because it adds that natural element to these fall uh, faux florals. And um, I have some Dollar Tree flowers in here, some uh, Walmart flowers in here and I just mix them all up. This I think is my favorite, absolute favorite look. So I took out the pampas grass just to show you another look and in the final, uh, in the photos, I actually added some raffia. I wanna thank y'all for stopping by. I want to also thank my subscribers. You know you mean the world to me. I am over the moon excited. Um, I am almost to 2,500 subscribers, so that's exciting. Um, and I, also, I want to also thank my new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking my channel and commenting. I do read your comments. I'm a little behind on responding, but I do respond back to every comment. Um, I am going to be probably here in the next month or so getting on a schedule. Um, I'm going to post once a week, so make sure you hit that little bell because it will alert you every time I upload a new video. And um, unless I do a collaboration, I am looking to either post on Thursdays or Fridays. I'm not sure which day yet, um, but I am going to be setting a schedule and I, I'm not sure if it's going to be Thursday or Friday. <laughs> so I'm going to work on that. We'll figure it out um, because there are a lot of collaborations that I participate in and um, I'm probably going to be cutting back on some of those or just adding it to my schedule. So make sure you hit that bell. Make sure you subscribe. Um, if you're new here and you're just stopping by today, I hope you saw something that inspired you. Um, I loved this collaboration and I plan to do more uh, woodworking and building things with power tools. I loved it. I loved my projects. They came out so good. And I know my family, when they see this, they're going to be like, uh, yes, please. You better be making me one. So I know I got a lot of work to do before Christmas. <laughs> That's why I got to go down to once a week. Um, it is almost the Christmas season and fast approaching. The schedules are going to start getting a little crazy. So I hope everyone has a good uh, rest of your week and I hope you all enjoyed this collaboration and don't forget to go and check the playlist and um, make sure that you subscribe to the host and co-host. The host is Crafts Unleashed by Robin and the co-host is Zaina from OK At Home DIY. Look at that sweet baby right there. He's my baby. His name's Leonidas. He's taking a nap. He's tired. And there's Mazkeen on the floor. Never too far, never too far. Everybody's got their spot. There's Samara, she's on the couch. It's nap time. I wish mama could take a nap because I'm tired too. She's got her head tucked under the couch. <laughs> I could watch them sleep all day just like babies. Oh, there she goes. You gonna lay down? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Love them. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here's some more that you might like as well.